Welcome to the Beyond the River podcast. Here's your host, Tyler Ulrich. Tyler Ulrich. All right, what is going on, guys? Uh, welcome back to the Beyond the River podcast. I'm on the phone with guide and owner of Cross Current Guide Service, Joe Dimalderis. Uh You want to say hi, Joe? Hello, how's everybody doing today? Um, and you want to just introduce yourself, give, give the audience a little bit of background and what, what you kind of do and how you got into guiding and whatnot? Sure, Tyler. Um, we guide on the Upper Delaware River on the Pennsylvania uh, New York border, and we also do destination trips through the wintertime to cool places in the world like Patagonia and um, Bahamas for bonefish, and do some Montana end of summer, early fall trips too. Uh, but you know, basically, we are fly fishing guides on a wild trout tailwater, and that's like our first love. Yep. Um, so you and I had a conversation back in the fall sometime. I don't know if you remember. Uh, yeah, I remember having the conversation. Yeah. I don't remember what the conversation was. So basically, I, we had talked a little bit about becoming a guide. Um, you know, I had, I'd reached out to you and a few other guides on some advice. You know, I was considering it, doing it myself. Um, and you kind of took a little bit different perspective than what, what other people said. I, I, and I actually remember most of what you said just because it was so different. Um, you said, you, I remember you asking me if I was rich or not. Um, yeah. And then you said, you're going to starve um, if you just jump into it and whatnot. And I, if you could just kind of elaborate on that a little bit so people can well, kind of. This, this, this is a career of passion, it's not a career of, you know, income. You know, you know. You don't get into this because you're looking to have this financially successful business. You're looking into this because you're looking to have a, you know, a very fulfilling, successful life, um, more than a successful income. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know how else to, how yeah. else to put it? But it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a love, and, and it's loving to guide, not also just loving to fish. You know, it's loving to help other people be successful. That's, you know, that's first and foremost. A lot of really, really good rods out there in the world that aren't necessarily like really, really good guides. You know, it's kind of it's mm-hmm. a different, different thing. Um, I mean, I I don't really want to discourage anybody from doing it um, because it's something I've been doing for decades, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, but you just got to make sure you're running to it. You know, you're not running away from something else. Um, That's something you're actually running to. And, and I think that's the, the real important part. Yeah, and I remember you apolog- kept apologizing time and time again in our last conversation, trying not to discourage me and whatnot. Um, but I really appreciated the honesty. I know a lot of people just said, just go for it. Um, but, you know, it's not really saying just go for it to me really isn't. I mean, it's you can just go for it. I think that's definitely an avenue. Um, but like you said, I think you got to think about where you're at and if you're running away from something or, um, running to it. And I think at the time I was kind of running away from something. Um, and at the time you also gave the advice, um, you need to be over your pile of fish. Um, yeah, you, that's c- huge. <laughs> that's huge. You got a good memory, Tyler. Yeah. You need to get over your own personal pile of fish in your life. You know, where you've caught enough fish in your life. There's not one fish really swimming around that's going to make a difference. Um, not that you're not going to want to catch it, but it's not going to make a difference. You get more satisfaction helping someone else get that fish, you know, and and, and that's where you, you got to get to that point. You know, you're sitting there with a client standing next to him in a river or in a flat skiff or in a drift boat, and you just want to grab that rod from him and make the cast because he can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not there yet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's something, you know, I, I, I run a blog and stuff, um, which is part of why I talked to you last time. Um, and I actually wrote a piece based on what you said not too long ago because I've, I've done a little what I'd call mini guiding trips. I wasn't paid or being a guide or whatnot, but I was just kind of helping some newer anglers along. And I'm definitely in that zone where someone's fishing. And to me, like, 
I see what they're doing and I feel like they're doing the right thing, but it's not working. And then I do want to just jump and be like, Hey, can I like, can I catch the fish? And so like, I then start like high holding them and stuff, trying to see if I can find a fish that'll eat. And then I just get super frustrated when I can't get them on the fish. Yeah. And you know, and what's really the thing about guiding is helping people be successful. I mean, anybody can catch a fish and hand off a rod, you know, if you're, mm-hmm. if you're a half decent fly fisherman, you're with a beginner. Um, I mean, you can, you can hook a fish and hand him the rod or her the rod. Um, that's kind of, to me, a smack in the face. You know, we never do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we want you, we want to, we want to position you, put you in a place to be successful and meet you at the level you're at. You know, not everybody's a beginner, not everybody's intermediate, everybody's in a different, different spot. And so we try to beat our clients where they're at and, and, you know, make them better. You know, the only thing we can guarantee in a day's fishing, we can't guarantee the fish are going to bite. We don't have a clue. We can guarantee lunch and we can guarantee at the end of the day, you're going to leave knowing something you didn't know before. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, you know, the crux of it all. You know, people come back because they learned something that they didn't know before and they took it on their own and, you know, they became successful with it. And, you know, now they're just better anglers all around, you know, and it's incremental steps. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's not feeding somebody a ton of stuff, you know, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't get in a boat or get in a stream with somebody and teach them everything, you know, about fly fishing in one day. Cause if you can, you don't know enough. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and not, not everybody, you know, and no one knows everything, you know, you're always learning. So I want my client to learn something at the end of the day and I want to learn something at the end of the day. Um, you know, so you're always learning in this. It's, it's, it's growth, you know, you're constantly growing with it. And that's what makes it fun. You know, it's never the same ever. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, how long have you been guiding now? Um, full time. This is my 26th year, I think it's my 7th year something like that. Wow. So I've been doing that. You know, and I started off putting my feet in the water a little bit part time, you know, just kind of seeing Mm -hmm. if it was for, for me and after doing it like less than six times, I just knew this is all I wanted to do, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it, you know, became a total lifestyle change, not quite a midlife crisis. It was, I was too young for it to be a midlife crisis, but, Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely, you know, a, a total 180 lifestyle and, you know, what I was doing before and kind of money you make in and whatever. But, you know, it's, it's what's important to you, you know? So mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, um, they just really be better off being a guide because they, they love it. And then there's a lot of people that would just be better off making a lot of money and going fishing as often as they can with the money they make. You know? yep. Yep. And they'd be happier doing that. You know, I mean, that's, that's what makes the world go round. You know, everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so you... I remember you telling me you were at a you were at a job, um, then you left that job to pursue guiding full time. Yeah, actually, I had another business that I absolutely couldn't stand, mm-hmm. um, and you know, did well in it. You know, I mean, you know, in, in twenty five year ago money, I was probably making twice as much as I'm making now. <laughs> so you adjust that for inflation, I was probably making four times as much as I'm making now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but. It, that isn't, you know, that, that money doesn't drive everyone, you know, it drives some people, but it doesn't drive everyone. Um, obviously it didn't drive, it didn't drive me. Um, it'd be something more to it. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm in this as a charity. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you still have to eat, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, put your kids to school, all that sort of stuff. But, um, but you know, you have to take it serious. So there's a balance, you know, you do have to look at, you know, you, you go into guiding, you still have to look at it as a business, you know, you got to watch your overhead, and your expenses, and all that sort of thing, but that's, that's not really, that doesn't become your focus, you know, that just mm-hmm. becomes, that's one of the necessary things you got to do, you know, but you got to have fun, yep. if you're not having fun, I don't care what you're doing, if you're not having fun, go do something else, life's too short. Mm-hmm. Um, so what were some of, like, the early, like, learning curves, kind of, your first, I don't know, handful of guiding trips, what kind of things did you learn right out of the gate? Well, I think what I learned um, is that everyone has a, has a different reason for being someplace. And, um, and it's not always 
catching a lot of fish. It's but there's a there's a reason that they're there, and everyone has a you know some kind of picture in their mind, and that's what they look, where they're looking to be. Uh, and, and it's it's a release, you know. I mean, you can get really 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 kind of like pulled into taking taking your environment, your place for kind of granted. Where you know you're outside every day, you see and fish in all kinds of weather, and, uh, and and there is a beauty in stormy, rainy, horrible days as much as there is in really nice, pretty days. Um, but you kind of take that, you see it every day, you know. And then your clients don't. Your clients are, you know, for them it's catching fish, it's going fishing, it's escaping from their job, their whatever you know stresses they have in their life you know it's, it's a real decompression mm. um for them and you know you need to under, you know the guy needs to understand that um so he doesn't need to create stress he needs to eliminate stress yeah. you know you know that people aren't going fishing to be in another stressful stressful situation that they just left you know mm-hmm. so that, that was probably the biggest thing i learned very quickly just kind of jumped right at me yeah um and so how how did you evolve from you know those early years into what you have now and about how many how many days a year are you guiding now i'm guiding uh, what maybe 100 150 days personally Mm. and then i host another 45 to 50 days hosted trips and the rest of it is doing some seminars and doing trade shows and uh, just taking care of the business and that, you know, you seem to neglect until the last minute and you have boxes full of paperwork for for all kinds of entities that you have to deal with that, you know, you wait to the last minute to do because that's not what we like doing. Um, and, you know, I evolved into being just a one-man show, just, you know, taking on one guy and another and another and another where you have nine guys now mm-hmm. and um, sometimes I think I gotta get my head examined but really they're great people mm-hmm. and, and I'm very choosy and I've been very fortunate to you know come across some really wonderful guys and girls that I want to see succeed that's my motivation mm-hmm. with, with my guys I want to see them be successful and do what they love doing and and do it the best possible and so that you know it's just it's another you know it's just another part of life just want to give back you know it's been a great career for me and and i'd like to see other people have that same opportunity yeah so when so i do you do you approach the guys you're trying to get on your service do they approach you um and when either of that happens what kind of what kind of characteristics are you looking for in your guides and your staff? Um, they were, actually, I think they've all more or less approached me. So some of, a couple of them it was uh, kind of mutual mm-hmm. to each other prior, uh, you know. And but for the most part, they approached me, and uh, this, you know, some of them very openly, so <laughs> very subtly. Uh, there have been several, you know, that came and gone. I mean, they never even came, let's put it that way. Uh, it just, just wasn't, just wasn't going to work, you know. So uh, I look at my operation as, you know, we're, we're my, my guys that work for me, uh, all my guys, they're my best friends too. Mm-hmm. So they're not, it's not where it, it's like I'm the boss, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, they're, they're, they're great people. They're just wonderful people. And some of them, I'm old enough to be their father. Some of them, you know, we could be brothers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I look at it, I don't know. I mean, it kind of sounds corny, but it's like we're a family or operation. You know, everybody cares about each other. Everybody's rooting for each other. Everybody helps. And, you know, that makes it fun every single day, you know. Busy mm-hmm. day, you know, there's 10 of us all waiting for, waiting for clients to show up and, you know, doing our stuff in preparation. But everybody gets, you know, j- just gets along and, um, and, you know, we have fun doing it, you know. I mean, there's that, you know, little digging that goes on, you know, in a good-natured way and that sort of thing, which which is all part of the fun of it. Mm-hmm. So you 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 like to keep kind of like a team family dynamic with your group where everyone's helping out, helping each other. Everyone's trying to be successful together. 
Totally, totally. Everybody's rooting for each other. You know, it's uh, you know, it just just this past weekend, I was kind of very humbled um, being named Norvis Outfitter of the Year, and. I credit my guys, man. Everybody's congratulating me. And I, I said, you congratulate the wrong guy. You got to go congratulate my people because that's that's who did it, not me. You know, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for those guys, you know, it wouldn't happen. And and that's how, you know, I look at it. I just want I just want other people to be, you know, whether we're fishing as a client, I want that guy to be successful, and the guys working for me, I want them to be successful. And you know, there's a lot of excitement in that. There's a lot of really good energy. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations for that award to you and to your entire team. It's oh, thanks, Tyler. Yeah, thank the team. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I'll take the bow, but it's really, it's really those guys who, yep. who did it. You know. Yeah, uh, and I think, I think you specifically, I think you kind of leave a good impression on people, which to me, I think is the most important. I know I've I've had a couple conversations with some younger individuals i'm part of the lake erie chapter of federation of fly fishers um and you know i talked they talked a little bit about getting into guiding and i expressed some of the conversations i had with you and uh some other people and as soon as i mentioned you they're like yeah i've, I've heard of joe you know or they have had guide trips with you um and nothing but good things to say about you and, and your organization well that's great to hear actually thanks for yeah. sharing that it's nice to hear it. If you could see me right now, you see I'm kind of blushing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really, really nice to hear. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think that's that's a key, you know. Uh, you always want people to walk away, um, not necessarily with the most fish, but if they, you know, have positive things to say about you, I think that's, I think that should be the outlook before anything else, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it absolutely makes sense. You know, with my business is a business of making people smile, you know, and, and feeling good and enjoying the outdoors and, and, and sharing what we do every single day. And, you know, and that's like what I explained to my guys is that, you know, no one cares that you just work 35 days in a row. That guy's coming here tomorrow. It's your first day on the river. <laughs> you know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to know if you're tired. It doesn't matter. You know, he's been waiting for this for months. So, so you know, and, and that enthusiasm that, that my guys have, I mean, it's just, it's terrific. And I just, I just, just love it, you know, because it's just, just great energy. Everybody has that way. Nobody's long faced in the morning, you know, everybody's excited every single day about, because I mean, think about it, we're going fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's, what, what could you be bummed out about, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's, your, if that's your biggest worry in life is that you got to go fishing again, you, that's yeah. a tough and, life. And, yeah. Yeah, if, if you know, really, if you're wor- if you're worried at, oh man, I'm gonna go fish again today. Well, you shouldn't be doing it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. anything. You know, if you, if you don't like going to work, then go find some different work because you know it's got to be something that you know you really, really want to do and really want. You know, that's something that's like you. You don't go like we don't work eight hour days. You know, we work twenty four hour days because we're always thinking about it, doing it. Time flies. Reading about things, uh, repairing stuff enjoying repairing stuff taking pride in and fixing a net or or patching up a boat or fixing a boat trailer uh, all that you know you take pride in it and it's just like what you do you don't even think about it you know mm-hmm. you're, not, you're not even ever looking at the clock like oh is it time to quit today and you know go watch family feud no it doesn't come into play you know yeah and i i think that's a lot of the main reason why you know, I, I, I went through the, when we talked last time and I talked to some of the other guides is I was just I was getting to the point in school and I'm still there now where class is just dragging on and I start staring at the clock. Like, when is this agony over? And I, I've not become a I'm not a bad student. I've been an A student my entire life. Um, but it's just I don't know if that avenue is necessarily what I want to go into. I am actually I'm going to work with the PA Fish and Boat Commission this summer, which I'm really excited for. Um, but I, I don't know if long term that's what I want to be doing with my life. And you know what? You're still young, so you, there's no way in the world you can know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people jump into guiding too young, and um, because they don't have any other, they don't have any life experience. They don't, they don't know what it's like uh, to be somewhere they don't want to be. And 
you know, working some someplace, you know, some kind of rat race, whatever you want to call it. And, and they don't understand what that is, you know. Um, like I tell all my guys, is, you know, best education you're going to get as a guide is to go hire other guides. Go fish some, go fit, you know, when you go away fishing on a trip or something, hire a guide. You'll see what a good guide is, you see what a bad guide is, you know, and, and, and it's worth the money. You could, you could hire the worst guide in the world, but it was a good tuition payment. You, you saw things that you, you wouldn't have recognized, you know, you're like, wow, that guy's a really bad guide. Um, and then you see why, and it's like a self-reflection, gee, am I like that? I don't want to be like that. Or, you know, you fish with the best that there is, and you pick up some really good things too, you know, like, wow. I like the way they do this. I like the way they, they run that, you know, different different things. And aside from fishing technique, um, and, and it just makes you better all around, you know. It's it's, it's like golf. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a good golfer, play with good golfers. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. don't play don't play with the hackers. You'll be a hacker forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so is this something you've done yourself? Have you hired other guys or guides yourself and kind of? Oh, Absolutely. Before I got into this, I was hiring, I was taking three, four trips a year, hiring guides for a week. Um, I still do. I still hire guides uh, when I go somewhere. A um, couple of, you know, a couple of reasons. First is their water. They know it. I don't. Mm-hmm. Second is I kind of like to pamper myself and not have to either row a boat or run a boat. And I have to just go fishing, yeah. you know. Yeah. So there's, there's that end of it, too. And, you know, and, and a lot of these guys I do go out with now have become good friends of mine over the years. And it's just it's just a nice revisit, you know, and mm-hmm. I don't mind supporting the industry I'm in. You know, I, I don't begrudge anybody. Mm-hmm. And so, like, from that, you know, what's kind of what's kind of the best thing you've seen from doing that? What's kind of the worst thing you've seen from doing that? The worst thing I've seen are foul mouthed slobs, great fishermen. Mm-hmm. Know their water really well, but just like the drunk at the bar, you don't want to sit next to. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's kind of the worst thing I've ever seen, and and the best I've ever seen are just you know people who are just class acts. You know, um, you can see that no matter what they did in life, whether it was you know being a guide or being an outfitter or being a, a, a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor, they would have been very successful at it. You know, because they have the the right mindset so whatever they their calling is they were going to do well at and um you know that's that that's where i i, I always tell guys you know I, don't be running away from something you know and, I, and I've, I've had guys approach me interview with guys and find out you know if they're really running away from something they're, not, they're looking to hide they're looking to get away from an uncomfortable situation whether it's a, a family situation a work situation uh they're just looking to get away from that they're not looking to guide. They're just thinking, wow, this could be easy. I can just go down float on a river every day. Nobody's going to bother me. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, you know? Um, so, you know, just like everything, you really want to be doing it. You know, just like you said, you're not sure what you're going to want to do. You know, you know, put your feet in there with the Fish and Boat Commission, which is great because that's how you're going to find that stuff out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, you're not sure if that's really what you're going to want to do, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have, a, I have a degree in criminal justice, you know, did, did, did I waste it? No, not at all. Because, you know, there's no such thing as a wasted education, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so it, it just makes you a more rounded person. You know, I remember sitting in those classes in school that I, I couldn't stand and wondered why I was sitting in there and, you know, could I care about Othello or whoever, <laughs> you know, some some required curriculum course he had to take as a sophomore or freshman in college, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, somewhere down the line, all of a sudden that comes back. <laughs> yeah. you, know, like, you know, wow, I thought this was going to be useless, but, you know, here I am sitting in a drift boat with a guy who's, uh, uh, an English professor for well, you know one of the big Ivy League colleges, and he's talking about this stuff. And hey, I, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you know you can relate to people. Um, so so none of that stuff is wasted. Yeah, is it torturous? <laughs> what it was going on? Sure, you don't mm-hmm. do it right now. You know, it's it's like you know getting waterboarded, I guess, or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's brutal. But in the end. You're not gonna regret it one bit. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think there's an aspect about a degree that the paper doesn't necessarily show. I mean, I'm gonna get a bachelor's in science. 
um, in fisheries biology. But I think more of what I've learned, which obviously I've learned a lot of the fisheries aspect. I mean, I have, my professors have been great, but I feel like you learn a lot communicating with people. Um, I feel like I've learned how to, you know, better express myself with other people and not be so closed off and kind of a lot of what I hated about my degree and a lot of what I actually am thankful for my degree is we took this one class called Human Dimensions in Fisheries Biology, which is not necessarily the biology aspect that I wanted, but it was a lot dealing with people, um, like realizing that it's not all about what you want. There's all these different stakeholders involved in the situation and you have to take all that into account and then you have to effectively devise a solution to that problem so that everyone is kind of gets a piece of the pie in the end. And, uh, you know, in, in fishing, fishing regulations, you know, that, that human element comes in, you know, your social regulations have no biological basis. They're just social regulations and there are science based regulations, you know, mm-hmm. but the thing is, is going to school, what you're learning is how to learn. And, that's huge because you pick up a book anytime in the future on any subject and teach yourself because you've learned how to learn. And that's, you know, you can't put a price on that. Mm-hmm. Yep, for sure. Um, so, on, you know, on the subject of learning, you know, how have you kind of learned the Delaware over the years? I know it's not necessarily always the easiest river. I feel like there's days where it can be, you know, just borderline outstanding and there's days where it gets really slow so how have you kind of learned and adapted to fishing that water because that is your primary water am i correct yeah that's my primary water yeah and you know it's it's i'm you know i'm on the river a lot so uh there are days that are downright silly and then there are days that are you know hard or slow whatever you want to call it you know fish just aren't cooperating for whatever factors and and it's hard, um, but it's just a fish, and you learn not to overthink it, and you learn just to go fishing. And if something isn't working, I mean, it's obvious when you got a hatch going on, you got fish feeding on the surface. Yeah, you know, it's easy. Anybody mm-hmm. can do that. Um, look, there's one rising. <laughs> you know, put a fly on it. I mean, that's that's the, that's easy. It's when that's not happening, and um, you know, you just learn different different methods, different things that work for you. Um, and you know, you, you share those with other people, uh, if something's not working, you just do something else. You know, I mean, if fish aren't turned on to nymphs, you know, you've been nymphed for three hours and nothing has happened. Well, guess what? Do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time to change. Uh, you know, you can float bobbers down the river, you know, with a pair of nymphs hanging under them. And if nothing is happening, you got them in the right slots. You know, there's fish there. Uh, well, it's time to do something else. You know, maybe you need to change the nymphing technique. Maybe you need to stream or fish. Uh, but you, you need to do something else. And and you know, you you keep doing something else. Something good is going to happen. You know. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's always knowing that if you have a fly on the water or in the water, it could be eaten. And you just have that confidence and that, and that faith in that. And, you know, it's like we call it pulling a rabbit out of a hat. You know, all of a sudden, boom, here's the rabbit out of the hat. Uh, it, it just, it's, you just don't get discouraged, you know? It's mm-hmm. just nothing. I mean, worst worst thing that happens is that it's a slow day. And that's from, from a guide's perspective, not necessarily the client. And you, you can make that a bad day for the client if you transfer it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, if you transfer your emotion of like this is really good stink today <laughs> you know um you know he's not gonna have a good day that person is just not gonna enjoy themselves you know so it's, it's it's you know being positive and you know everything just works you know things are um come together i don't know why they do but they do mm-hmm. uh I, I never really delved into the that aspect of it you know it's like why things happen i don't i don't really know it just yeah. does you know and, and learning a river is just a matter of water time you know it's mm-hmm. just time on the water in different situations different water levels different conditions fish do move you know they have fins they swim mm-hmm. and just knowing where they're going to be from past experience so it is putting in water time you know uh and and you relate 
certain situations, either, even other rivers you've been to, you, you you start thinking, oh wow, this reminds me. You know, I do it all the time when I'm fishing somewhere else. I, you know, I'll be like, oh, this 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 reminds me of you know whatever stretch on the West Branch mm-hmm. or, or the main step. You know, and you know I just put those same tactics or you know in, into use there, and you find you you know it works. You know, um, you know we are a wild fishery in, in the East. It's kind of somewhat unique to have a wild fishery this big, and mm-hmm. you know that that does make it hard for some people um, because they're used to catching you know stocked fish, which are a lot different. Yeah. They're used to fishing smaller water, you know, where a thirty foot cast is going to put them on the other bank. Um, you know, here thirty foot cast is just getting you in the game. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. You know, so uh, you know there is that that little bit of difference and and different presentation casts. You know, when you dry fly nymphing and streamer fishing, um, that uh, a lot of people just don't know. So it's our job to teach them that. You know, because if we don't, they're not going to be successful. And you know, and and so that's that's really our job. You know, we're teachers and. Uh, sometimes we're psychiatrists, sometimes <laughs> we're bartenders, sometimes, yep. you know, we're, we're stand-up comics, whatever, you mm-hmm. know, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's just having that relationship, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate now, I seldom take out someone I don't know, just because I've been doing this so long that everyone I take out I know, mm-hmm. so it's, every day is like visiting an old friend, you know, which is kind of cool too. You know, and you know, I got clients my age and older, and I remember, you know, when when I first met them, their kid was twelve, and my kid was twelve. Now they're in their thirties and have careers, and who's living where, and who's having kids, and mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's just kind of fun, you know, not kind of, it's, it's absolutely fun, you know. So I mean, there's something I think about all the friends I have, I don't think any of them don't fly fish, so and and that's not by design, that's just. You know, you just hang out with people like-minded, you mm-hmm. know? Yep. Um, so you're saying you're mostly return clientele now, almost entirely? Yeah, almost, like, well over 90%. Mm-hmm. And, and even the guys who, who are with, especially the spring, like, you know, I have one, two, three guys who 100% of their spring business are going to be repeat clients. And, um, you know, then throughout the rest of the season, you know, you you had some repeat clients, some new clients, but, um, you know, I, I kind of measured my guys by that, to, you know, not formally, but, mm-hmm. you know, I just see people coming back and they're asking for them, asking for them, and, you know, they want to fish with them again. You know, they're doing the right job, you know, yeah. they're just, they're just doing the right job. So it's kind of nice to be booked out a year in advance or more, um, from a business perspective, because you're not wondering if you're going to, you know, make make a living tomorrow you know you know this year that already next year is pretty set you know mm-hmm. as long as long as there's no like plague of locust or something that happens to <laughs> you know environmentally you know everything's going to be fine you know so it takes that stress away um and you know it, it's like like anything it takes a little work to get to that point um but it's fun work you know so it's you know it's not it's not work like digging ditches, you know, it's, it's yeah. fun work. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it's good for the financial security, but like, like I think you said, with the way you measure your guys, that also speaks to the service that you're giving. Obviously, if people are going to come back year after year, that you're doing something right. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, it's like, you gotta be doing something right. You know, I, I, I you know, our business is, um, I don't know, it's just like we spend our days every single day hanging out and fishing with some of the nicest people you ever going to run into, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't care, you know, the guy could be some Fortune 500, you know, executive or CEO and everybody in the company hates him for whatever reason, but when he's on a river, he's a great guy, you mm-hmm. know? Yep. And, you know, I, I don't, you know, we don't judge anybody. You know, you could be a... Uh, you know, carpenter or bricklayer fishing with us too. It doesn't matter. You know, it's all it's all good. You know, um, so you know we don't judge people. Um, we don't. You know, why? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's really they're, they're, it's their job to judge us. It's not you know our job to judge them. You know, I, I've had guys tell me, oh wow, you know, it was really tough. The guy couldn't couldn't cast. 
fast, he couldn't fish, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that. And it's like, well, guess why he hired us? Mm-hmm. Because we can't do that, you know. <laughs> that's why that's why he needs us. And, and you know, you know, we're not providing a taxi service, but you know, we're providing a, a guide service, you know, where you know, they need to learn, they need to to, to, to be that. You know, I kinda explain to guys just like, you know, you went to uh, the golf course and you went out fishing or you know, playing golf with the club pro, well, if the guy's not teaching you, you, you know, you're going around, what are you, what, what are you paying the guy for? Mm-hmm. You know, just to hang out with you while you hack balls into the woods? No, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the same type of thing, whether you're a golf pro, tennis pro, fishing pro, you know, it's a recreational industry that people are looking to you to become better at the passion they have for that same sport, you know? So, um, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So w- one of the biggest things for me um, is, you know, I don't necessarily like fishing the same stretch of water a lot. I know there's a lot of guys that will like to fish the same water a lot. It's just not me. I like to move around, see new water and whatnot. But how do you, how do you, I don't, I don't know what your feelings are about that, but how do you kind of, kind of guide the same water almost every day or I know you have different floats and whatnot, but you see the same water kind of a lot. How do you manage that? Well, it, right now we have 80 miles of river to choose from. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of different floats I can do. Uh, I'm not concerned about me so much seeing the same piece of water every day as I am my client because I don't like seeing it every day, you know, if I went somewhere or whatever. So, you know, I have someone here for two or three days. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to take them on the same piece of river every day unless they want to, you know, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of people do because it was on fire yesterday or whatever and they want to fish that again. All right, great. Um, but to me, it's never the same piece of water. Never, ever. Mm-hmm. It's constantly changing and the scenery might be the same, but the water we fished yesterday, you know, that water is 75, 80 miles down river now, <laughs> you know, we got mm-hmm. old fresh water coming in, we got new water and you know, fish are jockeying around a little bit. You know, yeah, you got some pet fish. Everybody has those, but things do change. And different. So you might be on a seven-mile stretch or 10-mile stretch you're fishing today, and it's not going to fish exactly the same as it did the day before. You know, it's, it's, it's going to fish different. And, you know, the times might be a little different, so you might catch it really going well a mile away from where you were yesterday. It was really going well. You know, so to me, it's never really... It's never really the same, um, but you know I, I understand what you're saying. I, I just don't want to be looking at the same rocks and, and all that every single day. Um, so we don't, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we there are times where in the summer where the system shrinks down and you kind of you know t- due to thermal reasons and you, you know you, you have to tighten up. Everybody kind of shrinks into the same part of the river system. Um, yeah, it's not as much fun. It, it, I wouldn't say it gets boring, but it, it, you know, it does. It gets kind of boring. You know, you, you just day after day after day, you float the same five, six miles, same five, six miles, same five, six miles. Um, but it's not with the same person, you mm-hmm. know, so it's still not boring. You know, there's a different dynamic that's happening. You know, you, you know, a different client or two with you and, different things change you know like what, what they're capable of doing you know you're not going to put someone in, you know you know their skill level so you're not going to put them in a situation that they're not going to succeed in that they're going to fail you know if you you're in a pool where a guy has to make a 60 foot cast in order to connect there's no way in the world he's going to do that mm-hmm. why be there you know you, you need to go find you know a situation where he can be successful and, and put him in that so you know see so it doesn't get really boring even though it is the same piece of river because that dynamic is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. All right, so that concludes our uh, interview with uh, Joe DeMalderis. I want to say a special thank you to Joe for uh, sitting down and chatting with me for a while. Um, to check out Joe and to follow you know, his journey and all the fish he's catching this season, putting clients on, uh, be sure to follow him at Fly Fish the Delaware on Instagram um, or check out his guide service at Cross currentguideservice.com also you can find them on facebook at fly fish in the upper delaware again i just want to say thanks to joe and i hope you guys all enjoyed